every year is going to bring new technological innovations that both impact how we are able to produce journalism, but potentially also impact how we are able to make money with journalism. Anita, how do we improve trust in journalism? So trust is, is a multi-layered uh, problem. And I think the solution to a multi-layered problem is, uh, is doing multiple things. Um, one of them, I think, that we see uh, here in the US is that, um, that investment in audience-centric work and uh, user-centric work pays off in terms of increasing the level of trust. So uh, people are more likely to trust an organization that goes into an honest and authentic dialogue with them and really wants to understand how to better serve uh, their needs than they are with an organization that's perceived as being like far away um, and not engaged in an honest dialogue. Being uh, global or national uh, does not mean that you have to be detached from your audiences, right? There is just kind of a natural indication that if you're a local or hyper-local organization, you kind of have a natural incline to be close to your audience because usually that audience lives in the same uh, community in that same uh, city that you that you're active in uh, but it doesn't mean that as a national publication or a transnational publication even uh, that you don't have to have that direct threat to your audience so you can make those connections by uh, using uh, virtual spaces to connect by using uh, digital groups um, to to gather your audiences by using newsletters to get into a direct kind of conversation and get in touch by doing online events that are not just um, not just spaces to transmit uh, but spaces to actually convene. So, with the programs that you run with executives in newsrooms. What are the outstanding features of a newsroom now that flags what it's going to be like in the future? As a leader in media um, these days, you have to be absolutely proficient in managing change and managing transformation because the one constant that you have in your, in your role is that every year, every month, every week, you're going to be exposed to transitions, to new technologies, to questions of new business models. Should we tap into that or shouldn't we tap into that? You're going to have to rethink um, the way your teams are structured and the organization is structured pretty much on an annual basis, uh, redefining your business models pretty much on an annual basis and rethinking the way you produce and deliver journalism. The second thing that I'd say is a lot of the transformation of newsrooms now happens at these intersections between product, business, editorial, and technology. Leaders who are in that space need to understand how to navigate that, need to understand how to lead a team that has tech people, product people, business people, marketing people, that basically kind of breaking down those silos between what used to be perceived as editorial and what is now editorial, integrating those new roles and learning how to, to lead those teams, those interdisciplinary teams, is the second skill that I'd say is uh, crucially important for leaders these days. So of those people that you are talking to, the leaders in those newsrooms, how many of them are running ethics courses on how to be a good journalist? Because those don't diminish in importance. I, I absolutely agree. And I think they both for, for the journalists and the product and the, the, the tech players in the space, I think all those uh, courses and all those frameworks have to be absolutely rethought because the world is changing. Thankfully, I know many, uh, many media leaders who take that very seriously and who put topics around ethics, around diversity, um, around objectivity, around fact-checking, um, around you know, hiring practices and so forth, put those front and center. If you're a fundamentally unethical organization, one that does not value ethics, that doesn't have a clear understanding um, of how they want to foster diversity and so forth, if that is the case and you do a, a mandatory two-hour workshop with all of your team, that's not going to solve your issues, obviously. So yes, uh, all these questions of values, which is ultimately what it comes to, have to be led by example from the managerial team and have to become um, ingrained, really, in all decisions that the, the news organization makes, both in the newsroom and adjacent to the newsroom. The Alliance for Journalist Freedom is keen on a voluntary certification program in Australia for journalists. 
a bit like we have for doctors, lawyers, accountants, architects, and the like. What's your thought on that? I, I don't think a certification would necessarily hurt, but I, I honestly don't think a certification would solve the issue of lack of trust because the people who already trust you um, are not going to you know, be the ones moved by a certification. The people who don't trust you, I don't think you get any skeptic uh, with a certification being like, oh, wow, now this, this person is a certified journalist. I actually think the work is on, uh, mostly on the journalists and the, the newsrooms to really understand that, the, that they are there to serve an audience and that their, um, their path to the future is for these audiences to understand uh, that these newsrooms are crucial for their participation in the public sphere and in you know, politics and policy. Um, so I think the, 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 the work there is, is more kind of has to happen inside of the news organizations. I don't think it can be kind of replaced by an external certification. So you talked about what journalism used to be like 15 years ago compared to what it is now. What's it going to be like in 15 years time? I don't think there is going to be the one silver bullet either on the storytelling side or the business model side um, that's magically going to appear and is going to solve all our problems, both financially as well as kind of the, those trust problems that we talked about. Um, I think how change happens is more gradual. Um, and I think what we are seeing is that uh, this user-centric and audience-centric work ideally leads to audiences being more willing to uh, pay uh, for news, more willing to become members or subscribers of whatever kind of news organization or news product um, exists in their, in their community. We obviously also going to see what we saw in the past 30 years, right? We're going to see continuous tech innovation, um, the way that stories are being told, the way that journalism is reported, the way that research is done is like constantly evolving. And if we look at it today, would we have thought um, that, you know, TikTok um, and AI um, and the metaverse are topics that we would talk about today? Um, I think even five years ago, that would have been out of the question. So yeah, I'm not big in the, the business of like predicting the future, but I think one thing that, uh, that we can be sure of is that like every year is gonna bring new technological innovations that both impact how we are able to produce journalism, but potentially also impact how we are able to make money with journalism. Anita Zailena, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for the interview.